When testing my route handlers using Jest in Node.js, I was running into a problem because my routes frequently interact with a Redis database, and I only have one instance of Redis running on this computer, which I'm using Docker to host. So before each of my tests, what I would want to do is I want to make sure that database has no keys in it so that each test can run with its own clean slate environment and it wouldn't be polluted by whatever happened in the test before that. So before each of the tests, I was using my Redis client and I was flushing the database to drop all the keys. And then my next test would have a nice, just fresh Redis database to work with, which is what I want. But the problem is that because Jest runs each test file at the same time, it's all concurrently, so this get me handler test is going to be running at the same exact time that the login handler test is running. Then in this login handler test, I also have the before each where my Redis client will flush the database because login handler also wants its tests to have a clean environment. So what could happen is a race condition. And what that would be is that the get me handler, it starts with this test, it flushes all please the keys from the database. Then it creates a session, which this function adds a, a user session key to the database. And then it wants to do something with that session. It expects some things to happen. It's going to operate on that data. But before it gets there, right around in here, the login handler starts up one of its tests. And it says, OK, it's a new test. I want to flush all the keys in the database. And it deletes the key that was set here in the get me handler test. And that wouldn't happen every time, but it would kind of happen randomly. So I would get inconsistent tests failing because of this. And one solution might be, OK, well, we could just run our tests sequentially. And that's an option in Jest. You can tell it to, to run the tests one after another. But then you don't get to run your tests fast. So running them at the same time, it helps you go faster. Another solution could be something like how in Postgres, there's different schemas. So um, schema in this sense means like a kind of a copy of the database or sort of a folder inside of it. And uh, you create this schema and you do some stuff in there. You add some things, delete some things. And at the end of the test, you delete the whole schema. Uh, and that's a good solution for uh, that I'm using right now in this application for testing with Postgres concurrently. And Redis has the concept of multiple databases. So if we look over here, Redis, it comes with 16 databases, which are kind of like namespaces or key spaces. And so you could set the same key in one database with the same exact name in, in another one, and it wouldn't conflict. And you could drop all the keys in database one, and the keys in database two wouldn't be deleted. So that, at first, sounds like a good idea. Um, and you might be like, well, how many of these can you have? It says 16. Well, apparently, you can have a lot. I'm on Linux, so I could have up to 100,000, according to this person's research. Um, but to do that, you have to change the configuration of Redis. So by default, it's 16. So in each of your tests, you'd have to say, up at the top, you'd say, um, well, you know, somewhere here you would you would select that database and you'd say, okay, I want this is my sixteenth test, so I'll select database sixteen and it'll all be inside that. And then you come to your seventeenth test and you go over and you're like, okay, this is my seventeenth test file. I have to select the seventeenth database. And then you remember, OK, it comes by default with 16. So you go into your Redis configuration file and you say, no, I want 17 databases. And Redis is like, OK, we'll make 17. You know, you're not near that limit of 100,000. And each test, you'd have to go and you'd change that configuration file. And you'd have to select the database. And you'd have to remember which number of tests you're on. Maybe if you have multiple engineers on your project uh, and like multiple people are writing tests, that could get very confusing. So what I wanted was uh, a different solution, which I came up with. And if you're interested 
I'll go through the details, but uh, in broad strokes, what I'm doing is I'm creating a Redis wrapper or a, a custom class that wraps around the Redis client. I call it the context. And it is going to prefix some random characters in front of any key that gets set using this context. So whenever it gets a key back, also it will use that key prefix that it's storing on itself. And when it deletes a key, it'll use a key prefix. And then we have a method for finding all keys with that prefix and removing them. So now before each test, instead of using flush db, we will use our custom remove all keys method, and this will only remove the keys from the Redis context that is using the prefix characters that are specific to this test file. Uh, and so that is, seems to be working for me, and I can tell you all the details. So we'll take a look at this class and we'll go through it so you can understand how it works. First thing I would do is I would call build, and that's going to return me a new instance of this class. So it's a static method. You can call that just on, a, on the class itself, and then it'll create an instance of the class. And then you can tell it with a prefix or not. So when I don't use the prefix is when I'm just starting up the server regular, like to host it. Then I just call build. I don't pass it the uh, with prefix option. So then I just get a normal, straight up, everyday Redis uh, client that will not have a prefix of characters. But in all my test files, I will call true. Um, okay, so where did it go? Here it is. <laughs> so then I create this random prefix using the crypto library, call random bytes, call it to a string, and then you get something that looks like, uh, yeah, I think it's like about, about, about that long. So probably long enough that it's a really low chance of getting to exactly the same ones. And then we will create a new Redis context. We'll use create client. Create client is provided by node Redis. Give it the URL and either with prefix or if we chose to create it with a prefix, we will use the, pre the prefix we created. Or we'll just give it an empty string, which would mean everything gets prefixed with an empty string, which is basically means no prefix. Okay, so we're calling the constructor. The constructor just takes in that Redis client. You always get that as an option and we get the prefix we assign it these two uh, variables that are part of this instance of the class uh, and then we would connect and that's just wrapping the normal connect and the normal disconnect and then here in the set you can see that we take the same uh, the same parameters that redis client set takes but then we pass them in and we just use the prefix to put in front of it. Same thing with the get, same thing with the delete. Uh, okay, so then let's say it's a new test and we want to delete all the keys with this prefix. First, we would have to find all the keys of that prefix. And there's a few ways to do this. So one, uh, one way you could do it is just call keys. But uh, every time you call a command in Redis, it will block the interaction with that instance of Redis until the command is done. And if you had a lot of keys, it's not suggested to use keys because it could take, uh, you know, it's looking at every single key one after another. So that's O of N. That means it'll take as long as the number of keys you have to complete that command during which time no other command will be able to be run so your other tests who are trying to use redis will have to wait and that could slow you down so the what they suggest is using scan scans another way to find keys in redis and it's kind of like finding keys in a loop so here we're calling scan inside of this loop the first thing that you pass to scan is a cursor position 
and when you're starting a new scan, you pass zero. So the way that I'm doing that is I'm keeping track of the current cursor position, and I don't define it at first. So here, in the first iteration of this loop, it's going to see that current cursor is undefined, so it'll call scan with zero, which will start a new scan at the cursor position of zero. And it's going to look for keys. If you don't pass it the option match, it'll look for any key, but we're going to pass it uh, an option of match so that we only find keys that look like a string of characters that is our prefix and plus star. We're concatenating star onto it. Star just matches anything else. So we'll find any key uh, that starts with our prefix for this wrapper, for this uh, Redis context. And then you can choose the count. So the count is um, how many keys it'll scan in each loop. It's not 100% guaranteed to be exactly the number you put, but uh, it's like a, a guideline. So the default is 10. You don't have to pass it. If you don't pass it, it'll be 10 or about 10 each time, but you could pass a lot more. So then it will look through roughly this amount of keys, and then it's going to return to you what keys it found and the new cursor position. And then you would want to take that new cursor position and pass it in to scan again, and it'll keep scanning from that position. So once we've got our keys, we're going to store them in this keys to return array up here. We'll take whatever keys to return we already had. We'll add in the, uh, the keys that we got from this iteration of the loop. And we'll set our current cursor to the cursor position that was returned from scan. And then we'll do the while loop again. And we'll see, is the current cursor 0? If it is 0, that means the scan completed. Uh, otherwise, we'll run the scan and we'll see. We'll say, current cursor, do you exist? It'll be like, yeah, yeah, we exist. You assigned us at the bottom there. And then it'll run the scan again. Eventually, it will return 0. The scan will be done. The loop will finish and we'll get the keys to return. So we got all our keys that match our prefix. And uh, we, we did it in a better way than just finding all the keys all at once. Then we want to delete those keys. So kind of like how keys, the command keys itself, is uh, would per perhaps block Redis for a long time. Delete could do the same thing. So if you try to delete a bunch of things all at once, um, it will block the, the Redis instance until it's removed them all from memory. So another way you can do it is unlink. So unlink. Um, it just like, I don't know, snips the, the keys from their values and then the actual deleting them from memory will take place asynchronously and it won't block Redis. So unlink just we take in, in a, a string array, which would be the keys that we pass it and it will unlink them and it should be nice. So then what we do in remove, ugh, what we do in remove all keys is we get our keys to remove. And then we unlink them, and that's it. So here in our tests, we can just say in our context, remove all the keys, and then the next test won't uh, it, it won't be polluted by any keys from the other tests because those have a different prefix, and it won't be polluted by these previous tests in the same file because we dropped all of those keys with the prefix that this file cares about. So how is it separated though? Like here we see wrapped redis.context, we're assigning it to this instance of the class that we just looked at. And like, where is this thing? Where do we assign that? So if we look at the same file here, actually, where we declare the class, down at the bottom, we're also exporting this wrapped redis object and it has a property context that we can assign things to. Um, you need to have it like this with an object with a property because you can't assign something just to, like, even if you export let this, um, you couldn't assign to an imported variable. So you have to do it with an object with a property and assign that property instead. Um, 
So yeah, so we assign it here, and then anyone else who imports apt Redis will be able to see the context that we assigned wherever it was assigned, even if you imported it in a different file, assigned it in that file, and then someone else imported this later from, from a different file, they would see the, the value that was assigned there. So an example of that would be in the actual app, when we first create our server, we, we create our express app, we, you, we call listen on the express app, and then we assign this value here, and we call connect, so we connect it, and then any other code in here, so like if we look at a route here, these, these are the route handlers, and in the login handler, once we get their password and email and everything and it looks good to us, then we can create their session. And here in creating the session, you know, we create their token and we want to store their session ID and their user information in the session so we can call this wrapped Redis context and that is going to be referencing the same value that was assigned all the way over here in instance. Um, and that is kind of living here in this file where, where it's originally declared. And these tests, they all have their same, or they all have their different environments. So when we assign wrapped redis.context here, even though it's talking about the same file that the other test is talking about, they have, they're running this file in a different separate environment. So they all have their own environment to run that code to execute it in. And that's why when we assign this here, it's not going to interfere with assigning it over here. They're going to be two different things. Uh, yeah, so then come over and you start running your tests and you see that it fails for some reason. Oh, because I never saved it <laughs> after I, I changed the examples here. So let me save these files here. If I had the, uh, yeah, I still have this in here. And then this, I don't know what, what is this? Oh, I was messing with the count. Yeah, right. And I was showing you about keys. And I was also showing you what the prefix looked like. Okay, so that should be good. And then here we go. We see tests are passing. Probably too small to read. Um, but yeah, before. I would randomly get some tests failing because of the, you know, they were deleting the keys in Redis and from other different tests, even though they're running in parallel or because they're running in parallel. And that's the problem. Now you've seen my solution. Maybe you think it's pretty good. Um, if you think other people could benefit from this, please send them a handwritten letter with the URL to this video, or you could just like the video. And with that being said, I've been Mike Silverman. Goodbye.